It's been a while since I've done a breakdown video on my channel as far as videos go, but this one I felt compelled to do. And yes, unfortunately, I know it's dealing with ramen noodles again, but I want y'all to listen to this video where he was doing an interview. Well, Abby Phillip was doing an interview on CNN of Ramaswamy, uh, where he was talking about how he wanted to end birthright citizenship. I'm going to go ahead and let the video play and then we're going to go into the breakdown. Ask you about another issue. This is also something that your opponents, Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump, have called for, including DeSantis very recently, which is an end to birthright citizenship. What's your position on that? Would you end birthright citizenship? I think for a period of time, I think it's going to be necessary in this country because we have an influx of migrants across that southern border, 14,000 plus per day by some estimates crossing that southern border. That is not the rule of law. That is the abandonment of the rule of law. So if migrants are coming illegally, intentionally to be able to establish an illegal toehold in the United States, then I think that that's something that we should not abide in this country. And we should the say country, that I take you that were, issue one step and, uh, even I, I, we should say also, I mean, you were you're both of your parents are Im immigrants to the United States. So you would have been a beneficiary of birthright citizenship. But you now are saying you would ban that for people coming into the country. And what is the period of time for which that would be the case for people coming into the country illegally? That's the key distinction. And people make this mistake all the time. And I think you got to be really careful when you talk about the difference between legal immigrants and illegal immigrants. One is founded on following the rule of law. The other is founded on breaking the rule of law. That might be and the case, but I'm just saying that border birthright security and immigration are not the same as issue. It's, what I'm saying is that birthright citizenship as it is currently in law does not make that distinction between yeah. whether that person was born to someone legally or not. So you are saying that even though birthright citizenship for you was something that was in play, you would take it off the table now. And my question is also, how long would that be the case? And also, how would you do it? Would you go to Congress for a constitutional amendment? Well, actually, I've supported the 28th Amendment to the Constitution. I'll actually go one step further on this, Abby, is that I don't think someone just because they're born in this country, even if they're a sixth generation American, should automatically enjoy all the privileges of citizenship until they've actually earned it. All right. So y'all just heard that right there. And we're going to go back and play it. And it's so much to break down just in this two minutes alone from what he said. Many of y'all probably already caught many of the stuff that he said, but there may be some things that you might have missed, but that's why we're going back to break it down. Ask you about another issue. This is also something that your opponents, Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump, have called for, including DeSantis very recently. And I'm interesting that she said that. Now I'm curious to know what Donald Trump and the snowflake have to say as it pertains to ending birthright citizenship right citizenship what's your position on that would you end birthright citizenship i think for a period of time i think it's going to be necessary in this country because he says for a period of time he feels it's going to be necessary and what you already heard previously is she's going to ask him for how long and he doesn't answer it so he just throws something out there and you don't have a time period like you you just said for a period of time okay what period of time because that is very vague it can be a very lengthy period of time or it can be a very short window of time. But which is it? And he tends to do that a lot. I find a lot of poly trictions, as I call them, tend to do that. Of migrants across that southern border, 14,000 plus per day by some estimates crossing that southern border. That is not the rule of law. That is the abandonment of the rule of law. So if are coming illegally intentionally to be able to establish an illegal toehold in the united states then i think that that's something that we should not abide in this country and we should say that you were one step and, uh, even I, I we should say also i mean you were your both of your parents are Im immigrants to the united states so you would have been a beneficiary of birthright citizenship but you now are saying you would ban that for people coming into the country and what is the period of time she made a good point right there. As we all know, uh, ramen noodles is the fr his first generation born. He, he was born in the early 80s. So his parents had to have come over here in the 80s and they um his mother, they con conceived and had him in the early 80s. He's only what, 37, 38, I think 
that's how old he is somewhere in that age bracket so yes he would benefit from birthright citizenship because he's first generation born on u.s soil but what is what got what gets me is what he says next and how she checks him after that country illegally that's the key distinction that's how you know this guy doesn't know how to read because if he knew how to read then he wouldn't have said that statement because what she said about birthright citizenship doesn't say anything about it being illegal or legal immigrants is actually true like if you go and look up birthright citizenship it doesn't say anything about oh if the person was born here legally then and they're an immigrant or they're a child of immigrants then they don't benefit from it and nor does it say if they were if their parents came here illegally and they were born here from illegal immigrants that they don't deserve it either it doesn't say that it just says that if you were born in america you have birthright citizenships and this guy's literally trying to end something he benefits from. That's why we are laughing at the Asian American community right now because they wanted to end and pretty much effectively squashed affirmative action on a collegiate level because it benefited them more than it did us. But in order to quote unquote get at us for whatever reason, they end up, you know, hurting themselves. That's how idiotic people like Vivek Ramaswamy is. Really careful when you talk about the difference between legal immigrants and illegal immigrants. One is founded on following the rule of law. The other is founded on breaking the rule of law. That might be and the case, but I'm just saying that Border birthright security and immigration are not the same issue. It's, what I'm saying is that birthright citizenship as it is currently in law does not make that distinction between yeah. whether that person was born to someone legally or not. So you are saying that even though birthright citizenship for you was something that was in play. You would take it off the table now. And my question is also, how long would that be the case? And also, how would you do it? Would you go to Congress for a constitutional amendment? And there it is. Like I said, you can simply Google and it will say that any, every version of the definition of birthright citizen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read to you what it says. It says, what is the basic definition of birthright citizenship? Birthright citizenship refers to the legal st status of citizenship when acquired through birth to a citizen, parent, or birth in the territory of a state. This is how most people acquire citizenship, often unconditionally and automatically at birth. It doesn't say anything about an illegal, illegal or illegal status or an illegal immigrant. That means, again, going back to what I said, if you have parents that are illegal immigrants over here and they give birth to a child, that makes them first generation American born. Which his family falls under. Now, granted, his family could have came over here legally. But guess what, Vivek? You still benefit from birthright citizenship because you were born in the U.S., when your parents migrated over here, whether legal or illegal, you still benefit from it. And you're talking about wanting to get rid of it because you said it's for illegal immigrants. It doesn't state that. But again, this is the same guy that just voted for the first time in 2020 at the age of 34, the same age I am now. But this is the one that they say is so smart. And they're propping him up. And it's like, do y'all not understand how dumb this dude actually is? He's so easy to debunk. It was, it didn't take me anything to just go in Google birthright citizenship definition. And that's just the basic definition that I read. It gets more technical, but it goes back to the same thing. It says nothing about if you're an illegal immigrant that you don't benefit from birthright citizenship if you have a child that was born in the States. And again, she goes back and asks him, what period of time are you doing this for? And how would you do it? And as y'all saw, when I played it through the first time, he deflects the whole time. He starts talking about a whole nother amendment. Because the birthright citizenship, I believe, falls under the 14th Amendment. He starts mentioning the 20th Amendment.
Constitution. I'll actually go one step further on this, Abby, is that I don't think someone just because they're born in this country, even if they're a sixth generation American, should automatically enjoy all the privileges of citizenship until they've actually earned it. Now, he said now it, it was very interesting what he said right here. And if you didn't catch it, you would have missed it. He said, I don't care if a person was a sixth generation American born citizenship. They should not benefit from birthright citizenship if they have not earned it. What the hell do you mean? And I just read the basic definition. All they have to do is be born here and they automatically get birthright citizenship. Now, Pete, how many generations he went back? He said six generations. Of course, we know he wouldn't qualify for that. His parents, well, they weren't even born here, so they're not even a part of the equation. He said six generations. When I Google six generations, roughly six generations is about 200 years. So let's do the math here from 2023 to 1923 is 100 years from 1923 to 1823 is 200 years. Who was on this soil in 1823? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't Vivek's people because most people of his lineage or his ethnicity or his background didn't get here more so into like the 1950s. Maybe a little bit later. So it's definitely not him he's talking about. It's definitely not the European immigrants because they didn't come over. Most of them didn't migrate over here to like the early 1900s. So that only leaves one other group because we're not talking about South of the Bordarians because they definitely wouldn't be in the equation. Hmm. It kind of escapes me. Oh, you know what? I think I figured it out. Black people, specifically black Americans. He must think we can't do math. And speaking of not doing math, I don't know if y'all saw or heard them comments he made when he was talking to uh, Tucker Carlson during that forum when Tucker Carlson was interviewing all the Republican candidates for the presidency and he made them snide remarks about black people in math. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was a bunch of BS. What, what you didn't mention. So I asked you, you've been traveling around the country. It sounds like you've really, I mean, you went to Kensington on the South side. You, you really kind of been to the span of the country. I watch media coverage and everything's about race and America is divided by race. That's America's original sin. It's the thing that cleaves us as a country. You didn't mention that. No. You, it's, so so why do they keep telling me that? They blow what I, what I call woke smoke to deflect accountability for their own failure, actually. So you, what do you think affirmative action has done for black people in this country? Nothing. What do you think? The, it's, it's, it's been negative. It's created racism that otherwise would not have existed. I've seen it. I have hired black executives at companies I have founded on merit. I could care less for the skin color. And then behind closed doors, people say, well, that person got their job because of race because they're jealous because they weren't good enough to get the job. But that is sad. It's unfair to everyone involved. They'll blow woke smoke. They'll say math is racist. When in fact, you know, what might be wrong is not teaching kids in the inner city for a year under COVID lockdowns how to do math. And then they're using this to cover up for that failure as usual coming from him he just had to find a way to squeeze and stuff about black people and it's something about doing math black people if you look through the history are some of the best mathematicians in the world as a matter of fact it was black people that brought math into its fruition but you know vivek he, he doesn't <sighs> Anyway, I'm not even gonna go all the way down that rabbit hole, but y'all y'all for those of you who know history, y'all know. But yeah, this is what he said. He said that he feels that birthright citizenship should end. And Abby Phillip asked him twice what period of time should birthright citizenship be put on pause? She asked twice, and both times he did not give a response to that question he just threw it out there because he does not have a plan like i've said kid gravity has said it too this man is only in it because he feels it's a popularity contest he knows there's no snowball chance in hell that he's going to win becoming the president 
or probably any cabinet position for that matter he's literally building up a base so when he kicks off that podcast he'll have a head start truthfully honestly we pretty much know his game by now that's why i and several others cannot wait for august 23rd when he gets exposed on that grand debate stage i don't even watch fox news but i'll entertain it that day just to see this dude literally get laughed off that podium and hopefully after that day we don't have to hear from him ever again but something tells me i'm i'm, I'm reaching a little too high with that one but i guess i can hope and dream right and wish that that actually does happen i'm banking he's going to get very embarrassed and the thing is a lot of the questions that abby phillip was asking him and even teslin was bringing to him that's kind of i'm not i want to say low ball but it's kind of surface compared to what he's going to get asked but it's like a warm-up i'll put it that way it's a warm-up before they ask him the real hard-hitting questions and the way he's been skating on by right now he's literally relying on his base to back him up his base ain't going to be able to back him come the 23rd he gonna have to literally have something in motion and i highly doubt that he is he's literally seeing this as nothing more than a popularity contest that's all this is to him he has not one plan and he gets up there and all he does is sit there and talk about black people this and black people that and how he has a company literally in case y'all did not know this man has a company called woke incorporated i kid you not woke incorporated let that sink in this guy talks about anti-woke this and anti-woke that but he has a company called woke incorporated i i, I don't even i can only imagine what that company entails i don't even want to look it up because i bet it's just a bunch of bs i'm sure of it